Hello, Moto America fans. It's time for another episode of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you may even learn something from this unlikely pair and their special guest. The mic is yours, Paul and Sean. Hey, Moto America fans, this is Paul Carruthers. I'm the communications manager for Moto America, and this is our weekly podcast, Off Track with Carruthers and Vice. As I mentioned, I'm the Carruthers half. Um, the more handsome half resides in Ohio, <laughs> and we'll bring him in. Sean Vice, how are you today? You're definitely the more handsome half. There's no doubt about that. I, I won't argue. Maybe my mom might argue, but that might be about it. I know my wife won't. So, <laughs> Oh, how sweet is she? <laughs> you know, you know how she is. Um, <laughs> no, I, everything's good, Paul. Um, you know, it's funny that uh, the guests that we're having on today, I mean, I don't know why we always act like we got to say, you know, you're going to talk about it. But <laughs> it's Jake, not a secret. Yeah, I know. But Jake Lewis, it's funny. He, he's been on, man, three or four times at least. It's because the kid's always got some interesting news for us and he's always doing different things. So, you know, we can't help but have him on. But you know, perfect timing to have him on now after the announcement of the, the team that just, just happened. So uh, this is good. Plus, plus he's out there in your neck of the woods right now. So that's very cool. Yeah, I guess he's uh, he flew out here this morning from Kentucky and now he's in Southern California. So he's probably uh, he's probably dealing with a little culture shock. But let me let me introduce him real quick. Jake Lewis is our stock 1000 champion. It just seemed like yesterday that he was started had a superbike ride, got injured, lost the superbike ride, ended up bouncing around a little bit, spent, spent some time on the couch, got himself back in shape and came out last year and won the Stock 1000 Championship. And it shows what, uh, what a little hard work and determination and good timing um, to make up for some bad timing earlier has resulted in him being getting a superbike ride with the Vision Wheel M4 X-Star Suzuki team it was announced. Uh, it was announced recently. Jake won uh, six times last year in Stock 1000, including the last four in a row, and that earned him the title and a nice fat twenty-five thousand dollar check. Like Sean, I talked to Richard Varner, who handed him the check, and he said that actually came out of your pay. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how pumped well, you are, but but Jake is pumped. So Jake, first of all, welcome to Southern California and. Congratulations on your not only your championship, but turning that into another shot at the Superbike class. Yeah, thanks for having me on. First of all, you know, like you guys were saying, I think it's like my third or fourth time. So uh, must be pretty important. But, you know, I hope this time is uh, for sure the best one. And with some exciting news, like you were saying, it's uh, it feels awesome to be back in the Superbike class on uh, what I feel like is going to be the best Superbike I've rode. You know, I'm really excited. Everything has kind of came full circle. You know, like you said, I was factory super bike uh in 2015 with the Yoshimura Suzuki guys my rookie year and had a good year that year and uh, learned a lot and was looking forward to 2016 and then we all know what happened uh breaking my shoulder there and then also you know my wrist and Tony came over and uh that season uh was definitely one of the toughest of my career and uh luckily you know I've been around the sport a while and stuck it around there for a few years and then you know 2020 took a took a year off pretty much and uh it was good to come back last year and get back in the series and get back to doing what I love and it was nice to win that stock championship and uh now back on the super bike so uh, excited for this year for sure it's funny because I've been doing these Daytona stories where like I review at two years at a time and I've gone through since the beginning of the super bike class racing at Daytona and, and you know kind of a preview to get us ready for our 200 and I think I don't know, it was one or two uh, stories ago that there was a, a young Jake Lewis on the podium at Daytona. And that, I don't know, that seems like so long ago to me. And I don't, I don't know if it feels like it's a long time to you or, or just yesterday, but Sean, I got to tell you, he looked like the tallest 12 year old I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny about Jake. I can't remember if I've told you this before, Jake, but you know, um, the first person I ever talked to about you was Earl. Earl talked to me. That was back when I was doing some stuff with Next Moto Champion, and he had gotten in touch with me, and he was working with you and stuff. I think we may have talked about this before, but um, you know, and you were then I got to find out about how you were racing 
you and Nick McFadden were racing with Garrett Gerloff and, you know, it seems like it wasn't all that long ago, like Paul said, and then you were on the podium in that Daytona 200 that year with the uh, motorsport.com means motorsports uh, Yamaha, I think. Is that right, Jake? Yeah, that was uh, a long time ago now, you know, back in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that picture too and looked like a baby for sure. And uh, <laughs> heck, I was, I was little back then. And, uh, you know, that was a good good year for me uh, in 2014 in the 600 class. Uh, it actually went down to the last round for the championship between uh, myself and Jake Gagne and was able to grab a couple 600 wins that year and just had a whole lot of fun, you know. In 2013, I was able to do the 200, but I went out like, you know, seven laps in. I had a, a mechanical and, and in 2014 had a pretty good race and uh, ended up third. And, you know, that was a, a good season for me. And, uh, heck, I unfortunately not going to be doing the Daytona 200 this year. You know, it's on 600s now and uh, a little bit too big for those bikes now, I feel like. You know, Jake, we've had you on a few times and I never run out of questions to ask you because there's so many things I'm sort of fascinated with how your your career has gone but I want to talk I remember before we talked about you it was a little while with a previous deal that you had before you found out about it and you were you were saying I think it's sort of the way it goes with whether it was I think it was maybe when you raced with um with M4 last time um in Superbike but this time, did you know ahead of time, have you known for a while? And was it just a matter of when they were going to announce it? Uh, I mean, honestly, I haven't known a long time. You know, obviously, everyone says it's the worst kept secret in the paddock. But uh, it was surprising to me, you know, after the, the last race at Barber last year, you know, uh, on Monday morning, you know, after the, the the last race and before the banquet, I think at 8 a.m., uh, Chris called me and John was on the line and they're like, how are you feeling? You know, cause I was out, you know, celebrating with my uh, friends and other buddies that race. And uh, they were just said, Hey, we look, you're on our radar for super bike. We're going to put that out to you. And uh, it was, you know, back and forth there for about a month or so. And then uh, still hadn't really heard or confirmed anything. And, you know, I was wearing out John and Chris's phone, you know, just cause I, I wanted the opportunity so bad that, get back on that bike you know ever since they got those bikes in 2019 or for 2020 it was uh I wanted to try it because I know how how good the bike was when Roger and Tony rode it at Yoshimura and all the trick parts on it so you know I feel like the time was uh right for me to join the team and uh definitely wanted to get on that bike so like you said I was just wearing out their phones and doing everything I could to put myself in the seat and and how were you surprised about Richie? I think it caught a lot of a lot of fans by surprise. They didn't expect that, especially since obviously Team Hammer had made that announcement that he was going to be racing in in Super Sport. And we we've been thinking for a while now that Richie would be good to see what he could do on you know in the Premier Class on a on a Superbike. But is this something that you found out recently, or had you known that for a little bit too? Uh, you know, it was honestly kind of back and forth there for a while, and. Uh... I tried to stay out of, you know, I just tried to focus on myself and my deal. And uh, obviously, you know, they were trying to make the best decision for the team and figure out what they could figure out and going back and forth b between uh, two or three guys, you know, for that second seed. And I had known, you know, for a couple of weeks now that it was going to be Richie, but I think he'll, he'll do great stepping up to the super bike. You know, he's been going fast for the past two or three years on the 600 and uh, riding at a really good level. So I'm excited to have him as a teammate. You know, I don't really know him too well, but he seems like a nice guy and uh, hopefully we can push each other to, to be at the, at the front of the pack for sure. And, you know, a lot of people had questions and asked me about Bobby and uh, unfortunately, you know, it looks like he's going to be taking a, a new career path. And, you know, I called him and I was like, I know what it feels like to, to be in his shoes and, not being like in a super bike seat for next year. And it's definitely tough. And uh, just tried to be there for him, you know, mentally it's, it's the biggest thing, you know, we've been chasing a super bike dream since I was, you know, four years old and I'm just fortunate to, to be in the spot I'm in for this year. So Sean talking about Escalante and the team, I was just looking back at a text I sent Jake last week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, Hey, who's your teammate? I won't tell anybody. He's like, you know how many people have been asking me that? I said, yeah, I bet. He was really good at just like evading the answer. 
He goes, you'll see soon. I, he said, who would be your guest? I said, well, apparently it's a rookie, which throws me off because I can't think of that many. <laughs> I would say Escalante, but he's already super sport. And he says, yeah. He's a, he, he said, yeah, he's, he's super sport. And he's just, I'm like messing with him so hard and he still wouldn't, the whole time he never gave in. I said, it has to be Richie. And he said, no, no, he's already signed up for super sport. <laughs> Yeah, you can. I mean, I, obviously, I couldn't share the news. And uh, the team, you know, like I said, John and Chris have been honestly working their butts off to put together a good program for us on the Superbike. And then, you know, the 600 and the Stock 1000 as well. And like uh, the press release said, you know, we have a, a new title sponsor on board, which is a huge deal for the team. And we actually went there to the uh, warehouse and met the owners and everything to do the photo shoot. And uh, kind of blew me away how, how big Vision Wheel was. I, I mean, you know, I'd heard of – them from Jeff May last year but until you actually go there and see what they do and what they're about you don't really realize uh the sponsors you have so it was pretty cool to do that well let's talk a little bit about the reason you're out in uh in Southern California apparently um you're going to do a little bit of riding which is always a good thing to do in the off season since you probably don't get to do much back home yeah for sure uh the main reason you know is just coming out here to test and uh I'm honestly super pumped about that because, you know, previous seasons when I was on the super bike, we didn't really get to do a whole lot of testing. And uh, like I said, John and Chris and the whole Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki guys have been working their butts off to to get the bikes ready. And they actually left two uh, of the super bikes out here on the West Coast. So we're going to be doing a little bit of testing, uh, a couple of days at Chuck Walla and then a couple of days at Button Willow with attack and I think uh Matthew with Westby is going to be there as well so it'll be good to you know get out and ride in some warm weather it's been absolutely freezing back home and uh it's nice to get out here on the west coast where it's 85 degrees right now and uh looking forward to doing some riding and start you know getting in getting in racing uh mode you can't tell anybody about the weather because we don't want anybody else moving out here that's right. <laughs> I would rather live in Kentucky for sure. Everything. Uh, the first gas station I saw a gas like five bucks. So uh, yeah, yeah. y'all can have that. <laughs> there is that. So Jake, you, you obviously you've been, you, you rode stock 1000. So you're not, it's not like you're going from a super sport bike to a super bike, but is it getting back on a super bike uh, when you do so this week? Is it a big, does it, does it feel really, will it feel really different or is it just a little bit? different than the stock 1000 uh it's hard to tell you know because i haven't rode rode this bike before and it's going to be a lot different than the super bike i rode back in 2019 but i think it'll be a lot different because uh the stock bike you know i rode last year it really didn't didn't have much you know you can't do much in the stock class as far as rules go nowadays besides you know suspension maybe a little bit of engine work and the electronics are pretty basic so uh you know these super bikes that they have, you know, have the best electronics you can get, you know, it has a swing arm, the good forks, good brakes, and uh, it's just the total package. And I'm excited to get on it just to see what it feels like and see uh, how it handles. And most of all, I think it's going to, it's going to be really fast. You know, the, the stock bikes, like I said, weren't the fastest uh, compared to the super bikes last year. You know, I remember the test at Coda when we came onto the back straightaway, I came on the back straightaway with Peterson and Fong, like when they were on the, the bikes and I mean you know it's huge amount of time just on the straightaways and how well those bikes come off the corners and uh it's just a, it's just a crazy amount of difference in the bikes nowadays you know when I rode the stock bike in 2017 uh they were a little bit closer to the super bike spec and we could somewhat keep up but nowadays you know unless you're on a super tight track it's really hard to keep up with the super bikes yeah, Jake, one of the things I want to talk a little bit about Altus uh, Motorsports because, you know, this, it's not like this is a secret, but it's something that's not really all that well known, I don't think. And I'm not taking anything away from Altus at all. Eric Gray and those guys do a fantastic job. But it's interesting that Team Hammer actually has quite a bit of involvement with the mechanical aspects of the bikes um, on that team. Now, for instance, they build and service the bikes. They have a service program after a certain number of hours or whatever, they'll, they'll get them serviced through M4. And I know that you kind of had a quasi hammer bike last year. So you you were sort of in the fold anyway, a little bit. And it, it just seemed interesting because the way it went with Cam Peterson and him winning his championship and then he went to the superbike team. Did you, when you took that job with 
or took the the ride with um, Altus. Did you have any, was there any discussion or any expectation that, okay, if I win this championship, then it looks like because of what's happened before, I'm going to possibly get this opportunity to ride the super bike. Uh, honestly, personally, like for me, that was the plan, but you know, as far as the team, I'm not sure, but, uh, at the beginning of last year, you know, I, I didn't even picture myself or think of myself being on a super bike this year. I mean, you know, my only focus was to try to win as many races and most importantly, try to win the championship for the Altus guys. Uh, you know, that's what they hired me to do. And luckily we got the job done, but, uh, at the end of the day, you know, looking at what Cam was able to do going from the stock bike at Altus to the super bike at M4, you know, I kind of wanted to take that the same path and, uh, hopefully, you know, get the same results. He had a hell of a season last year, you know, finishing third in the points and was able to win a race and he rode really good on the bike. And, uh, hopefully, you know, I can do the same, but, you know, we didn't, even when I signed with Altus, you know, they, they do get support and help from team hammer, but it wasn't like, uh, I didn't really even talk to John or Chris at that time. You know, I, I, I wasn't like planning on taking a, a spot on the super bike for this year. Yeah, I mean that's that's exactly right. It's more the bike than it is the, the rider, or the team. I mean they don't they they're pretty hands off with the, that team, and I know the Nasanis have a real good relationship with the Elriches, and that that situation works out well. But yeah, I want to make sure that's understood. It's more just about you know the bike and everything. Do you do you have any idea was the bike that you had this past year was it Cam Peterson's old bike or was it a, a different bike altogether? No, I mean, honestly, it was the exact same. Uh, okay. When I, fir I first rode the bike, uh, it was at uh, down in Texas. I had rode the bike for a day or two, and it had the exact same uh, setup and same everything from Cam Peterson. And obviously, you know, they freshened it up here and there. And uh, we, we, you know, we went away from his setup and, you know, did, did some things that fit me better and suited more my style. But it was the same bike. I think the bike is actually like a – 2018 or you know I don't know what year model it was but it definitely wasn't like brand new and had the freshest of parts on it but uh, I know at the end of the year they sold that bike and uh, are starting fresh for for next year or for this year you know it's funny you it's been interesting about you with this these various iterations of this Suzuki GSXR 1000 you had mentioned of course that you were with Yosh and you were on a essentially a factory uh, Suzuki and I remember when you went you were racing superbike on M for M4 on the team hammer bike and I even talked to Chris Ulrich about this but you know just look you go over and you look at the bike that Tony was riding and then you look at the bike you were riding they weren't the same they weren't even close I mean they were close but you know what I'm saying the swing arm was different there were so many things that I was surprised were so different about that team hammer bike so then you go into a stock 1000 Suzuki and it's obviously they've had newer models since then. So some things have changed, but do you know if this bike that you're going to have this coming year, is it, is it closer to what, is it a factory Suzuki? And is it closer to what probably Yosh would be racing if they were still involved today? I believe so. I mean, it's, I, I mean, it's not identical to what Roger and Tony raced at Yosh, but uh, it's, it's definitely pretty close. You know, they've, made a few uh you know that they're running suitor swing arms now and uh, running a few obviously import exhaust and a few different parts here and there but as far as you know what i rode back in 18 and then especially 19 you know 2019 we switched to electronics and had a hell of a, a tough time with those electronics in 2019 so it was definitely a tough year but this bike i mean like you said you know back in they got them back in 2017 straight from japan and they were so much different than what I was riding, but the average fan, you know, watching on TV, they're like, you know, why isn't he up there battling with Roger and Tony? I mean, he's on a Suzuki and pretty much the same bike, but I mean, as if you're a racer and a follow racing at the races, I mean, you know, you can look at that bike and that bike. And I mean, it's, it was a heck of a difference. You know, this, this bike they have now has really good forks. Uh, like you said, a swing arm, uh, the best shock you can get the best electronics. And uh, it's really, the best of the best as far as Suzuki goes. So that's why I'm just so excited to ride it because uh, I know the level of equipment it has now and the, the crew they put together for me this year is, uh, is really good. You know, we had a Google meet last week with uh, all the new guys and some new faces for me, which is exciting and uh, some smart guys as well. And I've heard nothing but 
good things about them. So uh, excited, you know, kind of for a fresh start for myself. And then again, you know, being back with back with him for it feels uh, good to good to be back. Well, and this you so you raced in Stock 1000 and Superbike Cup last year, which meant that you raced in Superbike races on your Stock 1000 bike. And uh, we can a lot of fans know this, but we'll talk about the fact that the differences are you get bigger on a Superbike, you have bigger forks more you know more compliant more adjustments on the forks and different triple clamps so there's some different things with the suspension certainly the swing arm and a, a few other things certainly the electronics as well as a huge deal um you didn't you didn't have that last year but you acquitted yourself well when you're out there in superbike so can you can you describe when you're on that that stock 1000 bike and you get on a superbike like you're going to is it a big difference even though it's the same essentially the same model <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, it's not even not even comparable, really. Uh, you know what we race in the stock thousand is uh, is pretty much you know a club level uh, guy's bike. You know you can go build the bike uh, for pretty cheap. You know it has, like I said, it has suspension on it, a tad bit of you know uh, electronics, and then really that's about it. But you know super bike, you have different wheels, you have different swing arm, you have different electronics, different forks, uh, faster engine. I mean, it's just incredible how. Uh, how nice and how uh, advanced the super bikes are nowadays. You know, if you don't have all of those good parts and go fast parts, I mean, you're not going to win races and run in the front. You know, even when I was uh, at M4 back in 18 and 19, you know, we didn't have the best shock. And, you know, I remember in 18, you know, I was, you know, right around that half second range from Roger, Tony, Bobier, Gerloff, you know, and, uh, we had to talk with the Olean's guy and they were like, Hey, if you buy this shock, you know, it's going to be two to three tenths a lap faster over race distance. And I mean, you know, when you're just looking for that small of margin, I mean, that makes a, a big difference, but it's expensive parts. And uh, the, t the team back then, you know, didn't quite have the budget to, to have and buy all the, the fancy stuff. But nowadays, you know, the bike that I'm going to be on, there's no excuses uh, for me. And that's why I'm just like fired up uh, to get, to get on the, the bike and the team is just because I'll have no excuses and like I told my mom and even told the orchards I was like just give me one more chance uh on this on this equipment to to prove what I have and and to go all in you know because two years ago I was sitting on the couch and uh felt what it felt like to kind of live a normal life away from racing and I didn't really enjoy that at all and uh was definitely a different person so now you know it it, get, it brings me like uh I'm, I'm thankful for where I'm at and uh, racing motorcycles is one heck of a job. Well, and, and also Jake, this time around, for sure, you're the lead rider on that team. I mean, obviously you have the most experience. You have raced in Superbike. You understand the electronics. This is all going to be new to Richie. And we, we didn't, we wondered about that. You know, we've gotten to know Richie pretty well, Paul and me, just because he's been on the podium so often that we get a chance to talk to him a fair amount and his, his, uh, development of his his language skills has just gotten better and better every year and he's he's just a delightful kid I mean he's terrific to be with and I think it's going to be so awesome to have him as a teammate and I think it's a huge benefit to him that you you'll you know you have such a great demeanor and you'll be able to work with him and, and help him along as well um but uh it must be you must be really looking forward to kind of getting back to looking at all those squiggly lines and because you understand that stuff and know know what you need to do to go fast so um it's it's going to be interesting do you think you'll you'll mentor a little bit with Richie uh it's hard to tell you know because I don't I don't think he's ever actually rode a thousand I mean you know he might have at a track day but I'm sure he definitely hasn't rode a proper super bike so it'll be interesting to see how fast he gets up to speed and I mean obviously there's a there's a big learning curve uh for him but even for me you know jumping on these uh these electronics I haven't rode Magneti Borelli since 2015 when I was with Yosh. So obviously the main focus, uh, you have to focus on yourself and be the best that you can. But obviously Richie's uh, a rookie and he'll be, he'll be fresh and uh, have a lot of motivation to do good. But that's the first person you want to beat your teammate. And I feel like both of us will be riding at a high level this year and uh, it'll make things interesting. You know, he is the same age as, uh, as me and, I'm sure we both have a, a big fire inside of us to battle for the podiums and race wins. Uh, you know, that's at least always the plan. So, Sean, to make a long story short, he's not going to help him at all. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to help him as much as I can, but uh, at the end of the day, we're there to, there to do our job and my job. And, uh, you know, I have a, a good crew around me of five or six guys that have a good fire inside of them that want to see me do good. And they put together a good crew for me. And uh, I mean, right now I'm just focused on myself and looking forward to seeing what I can do. But, like I said, I, I know Richie a little bit. He's a super nice guy and uh, looking forward to having him as a teammate and just seeing what we can push each other to accomplish. Now, you mentioned all the electronics and all the cool stuff that superbikes have on them. Is As a rider, and I don't know, I don't know how, what your level is as far as understanding electronics and understanding all that stuff, but like, it seems to me like, it, honestly, as a rider, it would be easier to jump on a stock 1000 and go fast as opposed to going really fast on a super bike with all the, the stuff that goes with it. In other words, I've seen guys in the past, like they're really good on super sport bikes and they make a jump to a super bike and they kind of get lost and they go down different rabbit holes. Can you, is that, that can happen, right? I mean, is that when you have to really rely on a crew chief to keep you on the path that you need to be on? Because it seems like you could just, you could go the wrong way with things. Oh, for sure. You know, honestly, that's, it's huge just because, uh, like you said, you can go backwards in a hurry and there's so many things going on with the super bike where you can get yourself in trouble and, uh, just go backwards and go slower really. Uh, but that's what you rely on the crew for. And that's what they hire. You know, I call them the nerds, uh, to run the electronics <laughs> and, uh, those guys are, you know, staring at the computer yeah for hours on end, you know, before and after we ride. And uh, it's up to us as riders to, to give those guys good feedback and know what we're talking about as well. You know, you don't definitely don't want to make a, a wrong change and uh, go backwards. But even during the session, you know, as a super bike rider, you know, you're out there thinking about uh, different things. Whereas on a stock bike, you know, you're just hammering down the, the whole session. But on a super bike, you know, you can break this track down section by section as far as, you know, traction control, wheelie control, engine braking. So it's going to be a, a big learning process for me again, but I, I'm excited and looking forward to the challenge just because uh, I know what the bike is capable of. And, uh, you know, I just hope, hopefully I can do good. When you look over the nerd shoulder at that computer screen, <laughs> is it, is it anything other than squiggly lines to you? Cause I look at it and it's like, I have no clue what they're talking about and I don't need to know, but with you, is it, is it kind of the same and you just put your trust in them? You set, you tell them what you think and then allow them to do the work with the computers? Yeah, for me, uh, that's how it is. I mean, some guys are more hands-on and understand the squiggly lines definitely more than I do. I mean, I just go out there and ride the bike uh, as, as, as good as I can and give the best feedback that I can. But I do understand a little bit of the squiggly lines, but not a lot. You know, I just, like I said, I try to fill out a track map and, give them the best notes that I can and uh, yeah, just trust them. Like I said, they put a, a hell of a crew behind me for this year and I'm looking forward to, you know, I have two good mechanics, a good electronics guy, and then also a good crew chief. And I think Chris is going to be pretty involved, you know, uh, this year he's pretty fired up himself. You know, I went to the shop last week and uh, met one of my new mechanics and saw the bike and the new colors and just kind of get you fired up a little bit more. Just uh, new exciting things are happening. Jay, can you tell us who your crew is going to be? Yeah, so uh, my crew chief is uh, James Sedal, and I think they were saying he hasn't been in the paddock since I think 20, 2012 or 2013 it was. Yeah. So yeah, I hadn't met him, and I uh, was FaceTiming and Zoom Zoom meeting and uh, with, with him last week. And uh, so he's my crew chief, and then Ben Fox is going to run the electronics, who I have a really good relationship with, and he's more like a friend to me. And uh, he's motivated me a lot. You know, he's, he's excited for this opportunity for himself and, you know, especially for me. And he's just been texting me every day to keep working hard and get my ass in shape because, you know, this year's there's no excuses. And then my two mechanics are uh, Tony Pogue, who I've worked with, you know, back in my first 600 days. And then even he was my super bike uh, mechanic back in 18 or 19. And then we brought him on halfway through last year on the stock program. And, you see what happened, you know, once he came on board, I didn't get beat and uh, I wanted to bring him over to M4. So he'll be one of the mechanics. And then Josh Alverson, who I hadn't met before, uh, he's going to be the other mechanic, but 
he has a heck of a lot of an experience and I met him at the shop last week and he was just going over the bike and man, he was so fired up and that just kind of, you know, made me even more excited to have a good group of guys around me who are just as excited as I am and uh, going to work hard to achieve good results. Yeah, that's cool about Josh. I've, I've known him for a while. I mean, he's been in different paddocks, different teams for a while. I mean, he's done, he's, he's a two stroke guy from way back. Uh, but, uh, I know for sure he's been around, worked with Hondo Bunch and everything. That's a good guy to have. And for sure, Ben Fox, I mean, I know, boy, he thinks a lot of you. I mean, uh, he, uh, I, I see his posts on over, you know, over the years on Facebook and he talks about you and I know, I know you guys are close. So that's good that you've got him in um, your corner because for sure he understands you and you understand him. And that's, that chemistry is very important. So um, that's good to hear that your your crew is is set up the way. And James, boy, I that's be you know I, he's like you said that's been a long time. Um, it's good to have him back in the paddock too. So you got you got a pretty uh, stout crew there. That's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, uh, Chris and John put together like a good crew for me, and uh, I hadn't actually ever even seen James around or knew what he looked like. But uh, we had the whole crew, you know, uh, of those guys, and then John and Chris doing a Google Meet, and when James and Ben both got on the call I was like man you guys are having a hair competition you know they were rocking the slick back uh gray hair and everything so it'll be a good time you know uh, obviously it's a business but you know it's it's good to have good friends and uh, be able to joke around you know because at the end of the day we're all there to have fun and do the best we can so as long as we keep a good atmosphere uh, I think it'll be good yeah, and I mean, what a what what a great time for you to go back into Superbike. I mean, it's looking there are still some team announcements that haven't come out yet. That we know some things about, some we don't. But we do know that it's going to be a pretty stout grid. And obviously, Danilo Petrucci coming uh, in uh, after Baz being with us last year. I mean, this is probably going to be this year the the best and most talented grid we've ever had. So I, I'm sure you're you're excited to join the fray and get right back in there and mix it up with with some truly world level talent that's really cool yeah for sure i mean the talent's gonna be pretty unreal this year in superbike you know you'll have gagne and peterson on the factory yamahas and then obviously skultz is going really fast on the westby bike and they got some things figured out petrucci's coming over then myself and richie on the suzuki's and then like you said i, I heard there's a new bmw team coming with two talented guys so uh definitely gonna have to be on my A game, but uh, I have a lot of belief in myself, and I'm just looking forward to getting out there and uh, getting going. You know, the first round's going to be at Coda with, with the MotoGP crew as well, so uh, if that doesn't, like, get you fired up, I don't know what will, and I'm um, really looking forward to kicking the season off there. You know, this Suzuki's always been a good bike around that place and uh, hoping to start the year off strong. You know, one of the things that amazes me the most this year, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a little salesmanship this right now, just because I, I think about this brand. So you had mentioned last year that you had heard about Vision Wheel from Jeff May having, have, being sponsored by them. And I was the same way. And I asked him what it was. And he told me aftermarket wheels. And I mean, I ended up looking up the company and oh my gosh, I was so excited about the wheels that they have. I have a little two wheel drive Tacoma and I'm just, waiting for the tires to wear out so I can replace the tires and put some, I got some vision wheels all picked out for it. They've got these nice five spoke matte black uh, wheels from this, uh, my two wheel drive Tacoma and I am excited to have them. So that's, that's a cool company. The guy that owns it apparently used to be in the paddock in some way. I know he's friends with John Ulrich a little bit. And so he's a, he's absolutely a motorcycle guy. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, I know he was, very thrilled to be working with Jeff last year. So working with you guys this year too is, is pretty, pretty good. It's, it's always good to have a sponsor that has um, a lot of interest in, in the sport. And, you know, did, have you, have you talked to the guy that, that, that runs that company yet? Or I'm sure you will at some point. Yeah, actually I did. So when we went and did, you know, the, the photo shoot for the announcement and the bike and everything with the wheels behind it, uh, we were, you know, at the, at their, at their head office and uh, we met, met the owner and uh, another one of the, the higher ups and they were super nice people definitely into motorcycles which is always a plus and I think it's just good for the sport and good for the team to bring like you said someone kind of from outside the industry and uh, it was even more badass I thought you know they offered to uh, give me a set of wheels for my truck which I thought was cool <laughs> they told me to look on the website and pick out something and they would hook me up and uh, it's just nice to have uh, a good 
a good big sponsor, you know, behind the team, uh, allowing us to, to do more testing and, you know, just to put together a good group of people for this year. Yeah. And, you know, it's what a big change for the team. I mean, you always associate Suzuki mostly with uh, with blue and, you know, that lighter color blue, the darker color blue. And I know Roger ran during I think it was their 50th anniversary. There was like a, a livery that was more of a, a red and black kind of thing. And it reminds me of that. But when it came out, I was well. Paul was making fun of me because I said, oh, look at the red. Well, there isn't as much red on it as there is black. And I'm colorblind anyway, but red's my favorite color. So I guess I noticed the red in the vision wheel. And I know red's part of M4's uh, uh, brand colors too. But it's just the bikes look completely different than they ever have in the, in the past. It's kind of cool that you, you're you going to get to ride this sort of really brand new thing, right? Yeah, I mean, the bike definitely looks a lot different, and uh, I think it looks good. Uh, obviously, the black and red is going to show some more uh, fingerprints than the blue did, and the blue definitely popped off a little bit better than, than this bike is going to, and uh, just excited to, to be on something, you know, different colors, and I sent it to a picture to uh, Ben who said, you know, the bike looks pretty similar to when they were at Geico, with Geico, you know, I don't, I think that was 2013 and 2014, but I mean, I think the bike looks badass and uh, definitely a few people have commented that they like the change and change is, is good sometimes for sure. And the team's excited and the crew guys uh, definitely going to have to have their microfibers out, keeping that thing clean. <laughs> yeah, I like how Sean is colorblind, but has his, his favorite color is red. It's like, how do you, <laughs> it's like if you can't taste, what's your favorite food? You shouldn't have well, any. It's kind of a misnomer though, Paul. I mean, I'm not blind. I just don't see colors the same way everybody else does, but I, I can see, I do know red, red. Oh, it's just shades of colors. It's kind of tough, but, but I do know it's completely different than what it was last year, I guess is, is what the point is there. <laughs> all right. Well, look, we all know that Jake actually had a real job last year and it was UPS, right, Jake? Yeah, I was uh, there up until, you know, about, end of July maybe first of August uh and honestly the job in the in the I was working in the warehouse on load semis and uh talk about one hell of a workout and just being frustrated at the same time you know those semis are baking in the Kentucky sun you know 90 100 degrees during the summer and uh I didn't really enjoy that too much and then especially when it came down to the championship time you know I was in a fight there after Laguna with only four or five more rounds to go and uh I just needed to focus on to bring that championship home and uh quit that job and finished out the season and then in the winter time you know they have personal vehicle drivers and uh, I did that for a few months just to you know make some money and have some fun uh during the winter I mean I, I enjoy you know working at UPS and it was a cool cool gig for sure and uh being a driver was what I was kind of looking into because I didn't think I was gonna get back into racing uh especially in 2020, you know, I thought I was, I thought I was done and was just over it really. Did the guys you work with know what you did like as a side gig? Uh, I try, honestly, I try not to tell anybody, but you know, that is, is mostly younger kids in there, you know, at 19, 20 years old. So then of course they looked my name up on Instagram and they're like, holy shit, dude, you're a motorcycle racer. And, and of course, kids at that age think you're making millions of dollars. But, uh, you know, if, I, if that was the case, I damn sure wouldn't have been in there sweating my butt off uh, unload boxes. But, you know, it was it was fun to work in there, you know, cutting up with those guys. And uh, it was it was a good time for sure. But even though the head the head guy, the head guys, you know, uh, the, the manager at the at the uh, warehouse, I mean, th those guys knew what I did and. I was fortunate, you know, they let me take off, you know, the Thursday, Fridays, and even sometimes Mondays to, to go racing. And uh, they understood my schedule, which was, which was nice. Yeah. And they probably also understood when you got to the point where you could tell them that uh, you were done. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> no more UPS. Oh uh, yeah. 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 No more UPS for me. I said, uh, Maybe I'll work out in the wintertime, uh, but, you know, that's just this separate little contract through the wintertime, so I could even do that, you know, from here on out if I can keep racing as long as I can, you know, definitely love this sport, and I think, you know, being away from it, 
kind of made you appreciate, you know, motorcycles even a little bit more. You know, I was listening to Hayden's podcast uh, with you guys last week, and I think, you know, he kind of realized that too. He was away from the sport for two years, and uh, it's awesome to see him back and get a good opportunity to go after that Stock 1000 championship for sure. Sean, you know why we have him on so often? Because he actually is a fan and listens to the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Every time I talk to him, he's like, oh, man, that podcast you did with blah, blah, blah was really good. I was on my <laughs> bicycle or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I took a break there for a little bit, but honestly, uh, I, I, I'm enjoying podcasts a lot lately and uh, just listening to a few different podcasts and uh, just gives you something to I pass a good hour or two by and uh, just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's cool. Spotify's contacted Sean and I because you know they've got some issues over there and they might want us to just go full time so <clears throat> part of the thing we're looking at we're just trying to figure out what the taxes would be like on that big of a month you know that much money yeah I mean you can make the show longer because uh, Sean for sure will ramble on you know oh. he'll ask you know seven eight questions in a row before you get a chance to uh, say anything oh, oh, that's why I like Sean you can you can uh you can ask them for sure ask a lot of questions and uh, I mean I'm, I'm like that too I like uh, uh, talking to people and getting to know people better and uh, just being you know more of a, a fan like you know interacting with the fans at the races is always good kind of gets people to know who you are a little bit better yeah and you know this year in the paddock I mean I kind of got to know your mom a little bit better Jake she you know I, I think because she was I would go, walk by Altus and she would be there and stuff and uh, she's a terrific lady it's it's great and will she be coming to the races as much as she has been Oh, for sure. You know, uh, she, she honestly doesn't even like to miss any races. Um, she, even to the, to the West coast, you know, she flew out to Washington this year cause we had never been to Washington and, uh, that was one hell of a trip for sure. I mean, you know, was, that's the hottest, I mean, that's the hottest I've ever been in my life, but she supports me, you know, a hundred percent. And, you know, that's why we kind of got into racing because it was fun and more of a family thing. And then, you know, especially when my dad passed away, she doesn't want to, miss another race and just supports me and cheers me on and uh it was cool you know the other day I got a, a text from a random number and just congratulating me on the rod and excited for me and I was like uh who is this you know that's what I responded and the only two words back were Wayne Rainey which I thought was was really awesome and uh my mom and Wayne have had conversations you know in the past and I remember even Wayne saying to my mom like and dad back at Coda in 20 I think it was 2018 it was like they were just jumping up and down and he was like, it's good to it's good to see parents get excited, you know, for their kids chasing their dream and just doing the best they can. You know, that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Just getting into it and uh, getting hyped up, you know, even George and Asani, like, you know, he, he would get so excited when I would win. And uh, for me, that means a lot, you know, coming into the podium and everyone's excited instead of just slowly clapping like, Oh yeah, you know, you won again, <laughs> you know, they were excited every time. I mean, I love the fact I just saw you had posted on Facebook and George liked it. And I think he even commented on it. I mean, he 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 feels real close to the riders that he's had ha, ha, has on his team and has had on that team. So it's cool that you've got him in your corner as well and, and Jeanette as well. Um, I want to mention real quick about Hayden. You mentioned that we had him on the podcast last and it's interesting. So he is going to be, of course, stock 1000. And then he's actually racing full on super bikes. So he'll be one of your competitors. You guys will be on the track at the same time. What's that going to be like for you? Uh, I mean, it'll be good. I'm not, like I said, I'm excited to see him back for sure. And like I said, I mean, he'll no, no matter what, no doubt be one of the stock thousand title contenders. And uh, as far as their super bike program, I don't have a clue, you know, what kind of bike they'll I mean what kind of bike they'll be on I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a Suzuki but the level of equipment and the crew matters so much in super bike uh so you know I'll have to see what that's like first for uh right you know for the to see you know the level he's going to be at but I'm excited to see him back in the pits and uh I'm sure he'll enjoy it all right Jake we're, I know I know and this is even hard to say, but I know Josh Heron's waiting for you to, to actually work out, which. Uh... Yeah, he's actually, he's actually looking at me right now, holding a ping pong paddle at the gym. And he said, he said, damn, how long have you been on the call? So uh, I don't know how long it's been, but I think he's ready to go. How's his dad bod? We're trying to train here. Can you hear oh, him? Oh, there he is. We're trying to train here. <laughs> 
Yeah. I know Sean Weiss likes to talk, though it's training time. Jake's <laughs> out here to work out, and he's been on the phone the whole time. And we're going to let him go. If you live as long, we'll let him go. <laughs> Oh, you guys! No, but uh, you know he's get, he's getting ready for the two hundred, and uh, he's excited for his new gig on the Ducati. And uh, I, I I sit around watching him do a little photo shoot for an hour, so he could give me an hour to talk to you guys. Yeah, it's uh, I think Daytona. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're we're both looking forward to getting started, as I'm sure you are. And good luck, and uh, and be safe at your tests, and uh, maybe stay away from the motocross bikes. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, I think that's that's for sure going to happen. Uh, last year, I didn't really even moto that much. I have a track at my house with some turns in it and uh, rode a little bit. But I think this year, I mean, uh, I think I'm not even probably going to ride dirt bikes hardly any because I was even talking to Gagne last year. And he told me he hasn't rode a dirt bike in two years, you know, just because of the injury and being sore and just the risk. You know, it's not worth it, especially when the team's all in for you and spending the amount of money and time and effort they do it's, it's uh not taking that risk of getting hurt again yeah yeah jake i'm sure ben fox is saying stay out of the woods <laughs> you know, so. uh mainly he no i get a text from him about every two hours or no i'm just kidding it's about every day though about i hope you're out there busting your ass you know uh, they obviously you know i came into last year a little bit out of shape but uh this year you know there's no excuses for me they're working hard so i'm working hard to come into round one ready to go that's great i don't think you're out of shape because round is a shape come yeah on. round's a shape for sure <laughs> yeah but i mean i did come oh, into last oh. season a little bit heavy but uh you know i've never been one to to fade in a in a race ever really so uh you know i can go out there and suffer and ride my ass off for 30 minutes that's for sure and uh Absolutely. there's no excuse i mean coming into this year ready to go be lean and mean and there skinny <laughs> all right boys um and i would be we would be remiss to not mention the passing of jason aguilar this week uh i know i know jake I, I i saw you at his pit often this year when he was working with or last year i'm sorry when he was working with michael gilbert as his crew chief um i think you would fight me for animal crackers over there uh, he always had that nice big barrel of animal crackers and there's they're the type of thing that you have one handful and next thing you know you've had 10 handfuls so um, Jason is obviously going to be missed uh, we're extremely sorry and saddened and and pray for his family and his friends and and everybody who knew him and everybody who did know him is is better from the experience because he was truly a, a very nice young man and I know you feel the same Jake yeah for sure I mean you know what when I first heard the news I mean it's kind of you know just heartbreaking at first and I can't imagine what his family and especially close friends are are going through you know Jason and I had a really good relationship this past year and I had known him you know years past and we had mountain biked some out here on the west coast but this past year you know I was if I wasn't in my pits I was seriously just over there at Michael's uh pits shooting the shit with him and Jason and uh you know my girlfriend was actually on the way to school when she had found out and read the news and I text Michael right away, you know, just thinking about him and uh, definitely my thoughts are with his uh, family for sure. And it's a tough situation, but, you know, at least he was doing something he loved and uh, he enjoyed life to the fullest for sure. You know, at 25 years old, never saw that kid without a smile on his face and working hard at whatever he did. So that's kind of, you know, something for everyone to think about and uh, just go through life. And, you know, you never know when it's your time, as I've learned over the past few years. So. I'm just trying to live my life to the fullest and uh, enjoy every day. Well, that's well said. Well so said. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And you guys have a, uh, have a good day and uh, keep safe and say hi to Heron for us. Will do. Thanks for having me on, guys, and uh, see you at, at Coda. <laughs>